welcome back to another episode of the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy's e-learning program. I am Mrs. Janelle Dolan Shepard and I'll be your tutor for Principles of Business. So today we continue with the topic, the nature of business, to which we will explore economic systems and functional areas in a business. So students, at the end of today's session, I expect you to be able to differentiate among the different types of economic systems and as well to be able to describe each functional area within an organization. All right. So what I want you to do, first of all, is within your family dynamics, I want you to explore, take a minute and think about it and explore who makes the decisions within your household in terms of what you eat what you wear, where you live, the kind of house and car you drive in. So let's take a minute and think about it and then we'll discuss it. Okay, so let's talk about it. So within your household, who are the ones that makes the decision in terms of what you eat, the clothes you wear, the backpack and so on? So if you're thinking your parents in collaboration with you, I would take that as an answer. All right. So basically we look, we are looking at economics and economics looks at um, the wants and the needs that we have. You as students, your parents, myself, everybody. All right. And how well we um, use our resources that we have to acquire our wants and our needs. Resources sometimes could be scarce and resources sometimes could be of abundance, all right? So in the presentation, you're seeing different types of resources that we have. Fuel and oil, which we produce in Trinidad and Tobago, um, technology, the career that you may want to pursue, and as well, a factor of production, which is land, all right? So some in, in terms of economics and producing goods and services, we have to ask ourselves three important questions. So these are three important economic questions. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom we're producing. So your parents have to ask themselves that question too, right, when they're providing for you as well. And this is how they would make their choices or they give incentives to themselves or to you in order to know what to produce within the household, okay? And as well, our country and the people within our country would make decisions based on these three questions and based on the economic systems that they would follow. So let's look at the factors of production, which would kind of help us to decide which economic system um, or, or let's say for the government of the country to decide which economic system best suits that country. All right. So for factors of production, we have four. So we have natural resource, human resource, capital resource, and entrepreneurial resource. In terms of natural resource, it's also considered to be land, all right? And that's any, uh, any type of resource that is found in the earth, the atmosphere, and the sea. So the fishes in the sea, um, you going out to hunt, the air, the sunlight, those things are natural resource, which is also known as land. Human resource, uh, the different people, the different categories of people within our workforce. So we may have skilled, semi-skilled, unskilled, managerial, and professional. All right. And uh, capital is also known as a man-made resource because it's the equipment and the machinery and the plant that we use on a day-to-day -day basis within the production process. And all these three combined would give you entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial resource, which once you use successfully, you would have uh, a bit good successful business that will bring in the kind of capital that you desire or the profits that you need to live. All right. Um, as we continue into the POB syllabus, we would meet factors of production where we would further expand on it. And lastly, scarcity. It means that some resources are scarce, which we spoke about before. We spoke about it in money as well. And we'll see it further when we get into production. All right. So we are continuing. Why economic systems? Um, as I said before, resources are very scarce. Right now in Trinidad and Tobago, a barrel of oil is said to be like a dollar. Right. So 
it means that our economy is not making as much money as we used to before. So therefore, we need to revisit how we spend money in order to move forward. All right. Um, economic systems, as, as I said before, it's decided by the government or the people within the country. And based on that, they would then decide which system is best for them. So let's look at the four systems. Let's look at what each system provides and the advantages and disadvantages of each one with examples. So the four economic systems that we're going to look at today, the first one is traditional or another term is subsistence. Number two would be e uh, market economy or free market. Another term is laser fare as well. Um, command economy is also known as planned economy. And the last one, mixed economy. Um, no, there's no other name. All right. So let's look at the first one. Traditional economy, also known as subsistence. All right. So traditional economy is, is, as it says, it's tradition. It's passed down from generation to generation. And we would have seen that mostly with the tribes, um, Caribs, Arawak, or the Pygmies in the Congo, or Eskimos, or those types of tribes. And what they normally do is that each person within that tribe is responsible for something. So the men would go out to hunt, the women would stay home with the children, and they may do some planting and so on. So everybody have a role and function within the tribe. All right? Um, and as I said before, it's tradition. So if your father was a farmer or a hunter, it's um, highly likely that you're going to do the same thing. Customs are passed down from generation to generation as well. Um, so you would engage in hunting, farming, and gathering food. All right? Also, everything is centered around the family or the tribe within that community. Okay, so basically it's man providing for himself and his family or community unit, right? So let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of traditional or, as I said before, subsistence economy. And traditional basically means that it's passed on from generation to generation. So advantages, people have specific roles. As I said before, the men, they would go out and hunt or some of them would be planters and so on whereas the females will stay home to take care of the children or they may plant or do other chores as well, right? Um, they have a strong sense of tradition because they are family unit, a tight-knit unit, so therefore gen um, customs and traditions would be passed down in terms of what they do, all right? And uh, people are less dependent on the outside world, so there's no interference from um, the, the, the outside world in terms of technology or government or anything like that, so... Those are the advantages. Disadvantages, we're basically looking at there's no use of technology within those, um, those tribes. And we know the Caribbean, the Arawaks, as we did in class before, we did bartering. So they would have also interacted with bartering as well. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. And bartering, we said, was the exchange of goods and services without the use of money. So they would have bartered shells, precious gems, and stuff like that. And another disadvantage is that there's a limited range of goods and services. So today, when we go into the supermarkets, we have ketchup, but we have a variety of brands of ketchups in the supermarket. However, within their system, it's just one product that they would make and they use that product. All right. And population growth is limited, meaning it's always small tribes. They're always in small, tight knit units, whereas um, Trinidad and Tobago's population is 1.2, and we are made up of a diverse culture. All right? So disadvantages, again, technology is, um, is not used. So therefore, you know, there's some limitations there. No variety of products. Um, population is very small within uh, the traditional economy. Advantages, people have specific rules, a strong sense of customs and, and, and tradition. And as well, people are not dependent on the outside world. So there's no interference from governments or um, individual groups or anything like that. So subsistence in a nutshell, where man provides for himself and his family. All right. Um, sometimes uh, nowadays, in terms of tradition, we can speak about having our own kitchen garden at home. And now is the time where everybody's actually doing that. Right. I see the, the different political parties giving out seedlings and, and um, private individuals as well. And people are going back to have their own little 
kitchen gardens and stuff and they are actually exchanging or giving to their neighbors or persons within their community, which is a good thing. All right, so that's subsistence. So we're moving on. So the second economic system that we're gonna touch on today is market economy or free market economy, or another term is laser fair. All right, so please remember that. So um, free market is where the private individuals or groups have their own businesses. And the business is basically come up with prices or what products they, um, they, they, they produce using the law of supply and demand. All right? So they would produce whatever they want um, for consumers to purchase. They would produce whenever they want and for whomever they want. All right? Um, this basically, it's, it's a theory, but it doesn't really exist, all right? So market economy is all about profits. That's pri meaning private sector. We did private sector and public sector in the last class. So it's, this is private sector basically producing goods and services, and their motives are profits, all right? So within here, you may end up seeing the poor not surviving within this economy, all right, and the rich is thriving because they have the money to buy whatever goods and services they need to consume on a daily or weekly basis. All right, so let's explore some of the advantages and disadvantages of um, economic systems. All right, so advantages. Competition, have, competition to have the best products and services. So we know within the sector, customer service would be excellent because everybody's competing against each other, right? Um, the quality of goods and services would be on par as well, and there would be a, a variety of goods and services. So you can choose from whomever or wherever you want to purchase goods and services. You have the freedom. They, in this economy, they have the freedom to produce what they want for whomever they want and however they want because there's little or no government interference within this system. All right. Um, disadvantages. As I said before, there would be a huge rift between the poor and the wealthy because the wealthy would have the money to acquire the goods and services. However, the poor may not be able to afford goods and services. All right. Just imagine me owning Wasa and I have the control of water within Trinidad and Tobago. So persons who I may not like or not desire to sell my product to, they don't get water. And those who I like, who I desire to sell my product to, they get a, a, a not, no short of water. All right? So we may have some issues there, disadvantage. Um, number two, in terms of the disadvantage, firms operate within little or no government intervention. So government can't come and say, okay, well, this old lady down the road wants water. You need to sell water to her. No. All right? Because I own that, that, that essential resource. I say how and when and where it is used. All right. And it is um, the firm seeks to maximize profit with little or no control. So as I said before, it's all about profits and uh, um, the government has little or no say in what happens within this economy because it's run by the private sector, private individuals and, and groups within the country. All right. So we're moving along. The third economic system is command or planned economy. All right, remember that planned or command economy because CXC could either use any one of those terms. So that's why I'm introducing all of them to you. All right, so this is where the government actually runs the economy. This economic system, the government actually runs the economy. So they decide what to produce, how to produce it, and for whom to produce it. All right, um, countries like North Korea and Cuba would be using this system. Um, this is where the state owns all the resources and they allocate how the resources are used. There's no private sector within this resource. Everything is run by the state. Everybody's employed by the state. All essential services are run by the state. And therefore you have like, for example, in Cuba, I've heard stories where persons would have to line up and come for essential services. So toilet paper, whatever. Um, Cuba would decide who what has to be what? So doctors, nurses, 
so you don't have the choice like we have in Trinidad and Tobago what career you want to get into. All right. So let's look at some advantages and disadvantages, students. All right. So one, you have equal standard of living. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we know doctors and lawyers make a lot of money. And if you're working CPEP and URP, you don't make so much money. But in Cuba, everybody's on the same scale. All right. The standard of living for everyone is um, as the country. So if it's average, everyone has an average standard of living. The same home, the same income, everything. There's less crime and poverty because everybody's on the same scale in terms of standard of living. All right. And whatever your needs are, are provided by the government. All right. Because the government provides everything within this economy. Then we have disadvantages. You do, in terms of disadvantages, you don't have any choices. Because as I said, the government runs the economy. They provide everything that you need. They produce everything within the country. So therefore, whatever, whatever goods and services they put out there is what is utilized by individuals within the country. All right? There's a limited range of goods and services. Um, we have, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a choice where we could either buy local or import goods and services. So we have a wide range. Whereas, as I said before, the government decides what to produce. So whatever is produced within that country is what is going to be used within that country. All right. Unless the government decides to import goods and services, then you may have a wider range of goods. Um, there's no incentive from the government or there's no private sector. Um, so there is no encouragement for entrepreneurship within those um, countries as well that have planned or command economy. Okay, so that's seen as a disadvantage because no private individual could say, okay, I want to invest in this, I want to do this and uh, um, open businesses within that economy. The government has total control. All right, so we're moving on. Number four, last one. So we have mixed economy, which is a combination of private sector and public sector, which we looked at in last class, right? We said private sector is that part of the economy that is run by the government and its agencies. Uh, public sector is the government and its agencies. And private sector is the private individuals and groups that own businesses within that economy. So it's a combination of the two. So government decides what they are going to produce in terms of essential or merit goods. Remember, we spoke about that. And as well, private sector, they decide what they're going to produce um, to make profits. So it's a combination of the two. And within this economy, we have countries like the US, we have TNT, Trinidad and Tobago, we have England, right? And most of the Caribbean, a matter of fact, uses mixed economy, private sector, public sector coming together and basically driving the, econ the economy. All right. So both private sector, public sector basically state says who they want to produce for, what they're going to produce and how they're going to produce it. All right. So mixed economy is basically a combination of command or planned economy and free market or laser fair or market economy. Please remember that. All right. So advantages, there's a balance um, of wants and needs that are met by the government and private individuals who offer goods and services within the marketplace. And both of them um, offer essential services. All right. Um, so, for example, the Ministry of Education offers education from pre to secondary. But we also have private individuals with private schools that offer um, education from pre to tertiary. OK, that's a, a nice example. Um, private sector is run for profits. Public sector is run so that they can take care of the entire population. All right. And there is competition um, between private sector, public sector, someone. Um, you have uh, Makoni that produces eggs. You also have government agencies like Hope, Hope, Hope's Kendall Farm School, Hope. And we have Louisdor. They also produce eggs and so on. And they compete as well because you could get it cheaper at a government agency rather than Makoni on the market. All right. Disadvantages, um, we are citizens, your parents, your aunties, your uncles, we all pay taxes. 
all right? Uh, we, we pay taxes through our salaries. We pay taxes when we purchase goods and services, okay? So we pay taxes, and those taxes are what would be sent back to the government so they could then redistribute to the economy to do different things within the economy. And when I say things, I mean pay teachers, nurses, doctors, um, build schools, fix roads, and so on, which we will get to at a later lesson, all right? Um, another disadvantage in terms of efficiency, um, public sector somewhat offers less efficiency um, as in terms of customer service and the private sector, you would see better customer service at times. So it differs, right, from organization to organization or division or ministry to ministry. Um, and as well, um, excessive control over business activities uh, that would somewhat add cost and discourage some entrepreneurial um, activities within our economy. All right. So public, so um, pub, a mixture of public sector and private sector is basically mixed economy in a nutshell. And this is what we have within the Caribbean. And this is what our governments would have chosen to use within our economy. All right. So let's look at the four economic systems within a table and compare them so you can more or less understand what we went through just now. So we have the economic systems. Um, on this side and we have who owns the system and the role of the government, the role of the private sector and how resources are allocated to each sector. So as we said, traditional or subsistence and they use bartering. Bartering was our first topic, right? So um, they basically provide for themselves and their families and they pass down traditions and customs from generation to generation. There's no government interference. And there's no private sector or anything going on there. It's just done by what their ancestors would have taught them. All right? And decisions are made based on customs and habits. So we need to remember that. Two, command economy. This is run by the state or the government, right? Um, resources are allocated to provide goods and services to the entire population. And the private sector have no role. So we're talking about countries like North Korea and China. And this, um, the allocations come from taxes and, and the different places where government gets its money from. And they would plan on how they use their resources, which is basically done at the end of September, beginning of October, where they actually do the national budget, which we would also look at in a later lesson. All right. Um, number three, free market, laser fair or market economy. Private individuals run that economy and they decide what they are going to do within the organization, within the um, country, sorry, using the resources that they have. And um, this is based on the factors of production. What are the factors of production again? Yes, land, labor, capital, and the three combined would give you entrepreneurship. Quite correct. All right. And prices is based on. Um, supply and demand okay and then the last one government and private individuals run this economy and this is called mixed economy and they provide essential services the government uh, make laws create standards through which both private sector and public sector would follow right and they also produce based on the factors of production and prices uh, made um, by the government as well as if some prices are deemed essential for the people within the country, the government may put a price limit or subsidize that price. So for example, Cal, right? Normally we pay 150 for a one-way ticket. In reality, the government subsidizes $50. The ticket would be $200. All right? So please take note of this and um, this topic normally comes for exam. So let's go to activity number one. All right. So let's go. Multiple choice activity. Easy. Which type of economic system best explains the system found within the Caribbean region? A. Is it private sector? B. Imperfect competition. C. Mixed economy. Or D. Free market. Let's take 
30 seconds to answer that question. Too easy. Okay, so if you guys said the answer is C, mixed economy, you guys are quite correct. So let's go through it. Why did I say mixed economy? Private sector is that part of the economy that is run by private individuals, right? And we are talking about economic systems. So definitely this is out. Imperfect competition. Miss didn't teach us anything about competition as yet, right? So let's leave this out for now. And then free market economy is that economic system that is run by private individuals only, right? And we're talking about what happens within the Caribbean region, which is a combination of government and government agencies producing what we want, for whom they want to, and when they want to, and um, private individuals or groups that also provide goods and services to us. So that's why the answer is C, mixed economy. All right? And plus, I told you back when we did the mixed economy too. Yeah. All right. So we're continuing. All right? So we're looking now at functional areas within an organization. So when you go into TSDT, when you go into KFC or Subway or any institution, just think about it. You're, you're going to put in some money on your shares in the credit union. Who do you see within the organization? And what role and function are they doing? That's what we're looking at right now. All right? So... Um, I used the example of TSTT. So let's look at TSTT. TSTT has marketing department. They have a human resource department. Some of these, these departments you may not actually see when you enter the organization, but you see customer service, right? Um, production, you have the finance department, you have research and development. And these are just the traditional departments, all right? You have other departments like legal, you have customer service. Um, you may have finance that would be changed into the accounting um, department. You may have IR department. So these are just the traditional um, departments that we're looking at now. All right? So just keep in mind that there are other departments that exist in other organizations. So the first department that we're actually going to look at is production department. And for my students to fully grasp and understand each department, what I would normally do is take them to field trips. So we go to Trinidad and they go to the Central Bank, to the Money Museum. They go to Nestle. They go to Angostura and different places so they, they, they could actually see and interact with these departments on a one-on-one -on -one and fully understand what I'm talking about. All right. So when you go back to school, please beg your teachers to take you to these places. All right. So let's look at, at department number one and let's look at the functions that they actually carry out. So production. Production is all about converting raw materials into finished goods or semi-finished goods. All right? So those of you who do food and nutrition, mistake into the kitchen um, and mistake out flour, butter, sugar, eggs, milk. What is Miss trying to make? Yes, she's trying to make it. Well, she's telling you all today we're going to bake a cake. Right, and she may say, "Okay, today's method might be a one a, a, a one step method where you're putting everything together and beat it together." So that is production. All right, um, production is purchasing your raw materials. So Miss may probably ask you to bring some stuff, or the school may have provided those things. Right, so purchasing of raw material, then the scheduling of the production process. So I'm I'm leaving Miss at school and I'm going into taking my students to on a field trip. So one time I took them to Bermuda's and that day when we went to Bermuda's, they were actually making cricks in the tin. So we are seeing that on every day there's a schedule, or a weekly schedule, right, of things that Bermuda's would make. So one thing was cricks and they have cricks in different sizes. So we were lucky that we went when they were doing tins at that time, right? So we saw where the raw material were taken out from the warehouse and they were measured and put into the uh, machine. And we saw where the machine basically um, mixed the flour and everything together. Then it continued on the, surveyor, on the um, conveyor belt and chopped 
um, the pieces of, of flour that was mixed together in pieces and then they were baked and, and we saw the entire process until it was um, packaged into the tins and so on. All right, when they were finished packaging, um, that's the only part where human interaction would have interacted to take the tins into the warehouse and pack them. All right, they, they also had a quality control um, department where they would take one um, tin of cricks from everything, every batch that was produced with the date and everything on it so that they would pack it away in a room in case something happens or somebody calls on the hotline and say, well, I would have experienced where I would have gotten a bad batch of cricks and they could go back to the warehouse where they store that, um, take it out and run some tests and stuff so that they could verify if something was actually um, wrong with the product and then they would do their remedying of the situation. All right, so production has one of the most important, have one of the most important um, function within the organization, which is creating the product. All right, so they have to ensure that they bring the A game in terms of production. So we're moving along. Next, we have marketing, and marketing is a um, is a department that would work definitely hand in hand with production. No department works in isolation. Every department have to work together. All right. So marketing is basically the department that identifies and anticipates um consumers wants and needs i would tell my students marketing is getting the right product to the right person at the right time in the right place all right using the four p's of marketing yes price place promotion and product okay so marketing is all about doing research finding out what consumers want what they need what 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 how can we make money from these customers that's what marketing is about so apple and Samsung is very good at that right now because I know you, pay, you, you, you normally um, beg your parents to buy you these high-end products, right? So marketing is about doing market research. What does the customer want? And you would see when you go into the supermarket or, or elsewhere, you would see people um, walking around probably asking questions or giving out samples and stuff like that and looking at your facial expression and so on. And they're actually doing market research to find out how to better their product if you like the product what changes you might want to see in the product so that they can do incremental changes so that they would get you to continue to be a customer to be to be loyal to that brand all right um, they are in charge of designing the product so when you know when you're standing in the grocery by the cashier in line and especially if you have little children you know they strategically place the M&Ms and the Skittles and all those things there you didn't come for that to know but your eye catch on it and the colors and the shapes and so and then you, you just pick up two and you throw it in the trolley it is strategically placed there they know why all right yes so they create the, they create the product with nice colors and shapes and sizes to catch you for you to buy that product all right um pricing pricing is giving a monetary value to that product based on the quality the size you know um we spoke about that when we talked about money in lesson number one and we distinguish between someone who would own a Rolls Royce in comparison to someone who would own a B13, right? I hope you remember that example. And then we have sales promotion and some examples of sales promotion would be sampling or um, branding, right? Or couponing or you go to the supermarket and you see two for one, um, it's not here really again two for one but probably the product is about to expire or, or something like that right or they have a promotion going on because carnival coming up and um they want to give you some hats or something to be on the road to you know use their product so sales promotion very important and then we have distribution of the product where can we go to get this product all right so distribution is a channel that you use is either you go through a wholesaler retailer till the product gets to you as the consumer or as a consumer, you cut out the whole middleman and you go directly to the producer of the product. So, for example, Angostura, uh, Angostura um, produces rum and LLB for you guys, yes? And you have an opportunity, or let's use um, Solo. Solo produces soft drinks, right? 
and you as well have an opportunity as a consumer to go on the compound of solo and buy directly instead of buying off the trucks or going to the supermarkets. And goes through the same thing. You have that opportunity of going on the compound to buy LLB, right? Yes. Um, and you would get it obviously at a cheaper price than if you go through the middlemen there. All right. So distribution is also um, a job for marketing, right? And marketing would do all of this because they are the ones that need to make the profit. They need to bring that money into the company. Okay. So marketing have a very important job as well. Moving on. Let's look at the finance department. Marketing cannot live without finance. Production can't live without marketing and production can't live without finance. All right. So finance is responsible for bringing in the money into the organization, overseeing where the money goes and as well paying money on behalf of the company. All right. They would also do all the financial statements and ensure that everything within the organization in terms of money is recorded and, and recorded properly. Right. According to government standards. All right. So um, finance is responsible for producing financial statements. So business students, we're talking about cash flow statements. We're talking about balance sheets. We're talking about profits and loss statements, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, in terms of making and receiving payments, they would pay employees and suppliers and so on. And whatever money comes into the organization from customers and, and outside, um, outside payments, they would also ensure that it, it was recorded and that it is done according to the accounting standards of that country that you operate within. All right. And uh, they would also advise management on the best thing to do in terms of financial mat matters. Um, probably they need to acquire money on a short run or a long run basis. So they would talk to management about that. They would ensure that all if it's a company that financial statements need to be um need to be posted um on the papers or so on make public they would ensure that all of that is done too in correct standing all right so it's important we're going on to the last well next department which is human resource department and the human resource department sorry the human resource department is responsible for all the humans, all the employees of every category within the organization. And the human resource department is very important because they are the ones that you would meet when you're first going into an organization, especially as an employee, that is. And they're going to be the one that um, oversee what is going on with you within the organization and ensure that you're okay. And they're also the one that you're going to see when it exits in the organization in terms of if you are fired or retiring, right? Um, so they have a very big responsibility. Um, they are responsible for recruiting and training. So bringing you into the organization. So when you're sending your CV or your resume, they're the ones that you're going to interact with. They're going to interview you. If you are chosen, they are going to bring you into the organization, orient you to the culture of the organization, and any training or um, talent management or anything like that, they are going to be the ones that would be organizing that as well. All right? Maintaining of staff records. Um, if you take a sick day, if you're going on vacation, if you're going on maternity leave, they're the ones that will be overseeing that and, and processing your paperwork to ensure that you get whatever benefits um, that is needed. If you are going to be promoted or you're going up for promotion and probably there are two persons within the organization that are going up for the same position, um, they are going to be the ones going through your paperwork to see how well you performed within your tenure while you're there and if you're really um, qualified and so for this position, right? And you may be probably re-interviewed to see if you are um, best for this position or the other person, all right? And if you are not going to work on time, taking more than the amount of days that you're supposed to, or just being disrespectful and carrying on and whatever, they also would be the ones that would be disciplining you, right? Um, and they have specific standards or guidelines that they would go by. So they are the ones that would definitely be doing this as well. Um, and if it is that you reach the point where they could no longer 
tolerate your behavior and so on. They will be the one asking you to also leave the organization. All right. So human resource is very important as well. And once you have a good human resource department within your organization, you'll have no need for a union. All right. And human resource also have to work along with finance in order to know how much money they have for um, hiring persons to know how much persons they need to hire and, and at what salary range and so on. They would also need to link with marketing and as well um, production so that they would know how much persons they need working within a department. And if one, person is, if one person leaves, to hire somebody else to fill that gap. All right. So the four departments that I mentioned before should be working hand in hand and they are very important. And last but not least, we have um, research and development, right? So research and development is basically about doing research, as it says, and planning and trying to implement new programs within, to, within the organization, right? And um, trying to also come up with new products and services. So every time you go to the canteen, sometimes you may see a new snack come out on the market. And um, marketing as well as research and development departments would have worked hand in hand for that to happen. All right. In the division right now, because of what is happening and we teachers are home, students are home, the division would have had to definitely put something in place, um, new programs and protocols, and they would have had a department for that. Um, it may not be research and development, but definitely it will fall under this. All right. And this department is where um, personnel within um, the company would be conducting research with consumers um, to find out what they want. Um, right. So in terms of that, I'm going back to Apple and Samsung. So when we look at phones before we had just a phone phone, then we had a camera. We had to have a TV, a tablet, a laptop, but now we could have everything in one because Apple, Samsung, Nokia, LG would have definitely done their research and realized that consumers wanted more. They wanted to be, they wanted something um, portable, something easy to walk around that they can definitely do um, everything at once. All right. Um, they can do also financial research to find out if the company will be profitable or not in the long run based on a new pro project or, or program that they would bring into the organization. Um, they would do feasibility studies whether um, to see whether a business would be viable or not, right? Or bringing on a new program or not. Um, and pilot projects too. So like um, we have a lot of companies doing pilot projects to see if they could add on some other thing to their or portfolio to their organization um, and whether it's going to be profitable or not, right? So R&D also have a big job within um, the organization, all right? So let's make a recap. The first functional area was production. Then we looked at marketing and then we went on to finance. Then we looked at HR and now we are looking at research and development. All right. So we looked at five functional areas. So it's activity time number two. All right. Simple activity. Let's go. We have a table on this side. We have the activities and you have to read what the activity is. And on this side, you're going to choose from here and say which department belongs to the different activity. So this one I'm going to give you, actually give you two minutes. So let's read the activity, read the statement. Next to the statement, you're going to choose from table number two to put which department belongs to which activity. So let's go. All right, so let's go. The first one conducts feasibility study, and this would be research and development. Um, number two, designs products, and that would be, right, so if you have production, department, that's right. Number three, prepares all financial statements, and accounting students, was the financial statements again? So we have finance here, 
and the statements are balance sheets, profit and loss, and income statements, right? Um, distributes the product, and that would be marketing. And remember, marketing also deals with the four P's of marketing or the marketing mix. And the last one, schedules employees vacation, which is HR, right? So if you have these as your answer, you're quite correct. All right, so I'm just giving you a flow chart which shows the different departments that we looked at and we are seeing some additional ones based on um, this organization. So this organization has IT in it, marketing is marketing and sales, we have human resource, research and development, finance, and we have operations um, because probably they are doing a service and not producing actual products, so they do have production. All right, so please, um, thanks for having you today, and I hope that you were attentive and you did learn something, and economic systems are very relevant for what is actually happening now in our economy, and I hope that you did get something from the lesson, so see you next time, and take care. Thank you.